Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. What is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your senior enlisted advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my lovely co-hosts, Leah Matthews and Julie Mitchell. Hey, ladies, how y'all hey, doing? Happy Thanksgiving. Good to see you. Hey, I'm loving the Chief Chat swag y'all got on. <laughs> loving it. Absolutely <laughs> loving it. You're yeah, so you're, 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 you're fat. So Absolutely. So I'm super excited about our guest today because we have a fashion on the show today. And if it's one thing I need the most help with, it's fashion. Because uh, I've been I haven't been wearing civilian clothes for a long time. It's, I've been in for 24 years uh, wearing the same same outfit every single day. Uh, and then you know, in between, I have some you know some sweats or whatever. So uh, I'm really really like behind the power curve when it comes to fashion. So. Uh, hopefully our next guest will uh, hook, hook us up. So without further ado, Julie, please introduce today's guest. I know. And you guys, I was saying before the show that I felt a little inadequate in my cotton cheap chat shirt for today's guest <laughs> because today's <laughs> guest is one of the world's most prominent designers known for her incredible wedding collections and for dressing Hollywood's biggest names. She's with us to discuss innovation and celebration, which is especially appropriate as we head into Thanksgiving and the holiday season. Please help us welcome Vera Wang. Hey. <laughs> Awesome. So Vera, welcome to the show. So honored to be with you guys. I mean it. I mean, it's just um, an immense privilege and think of where we were even a year ago. So this is incredible. guys. Absolutely. And it's an absolute pleasure to have you with us today. Can you uh, let our folks know where you're joining us from? I am joining you from my apartment in New York, where I'm going to be celebrating the holidays with my children, my family, and um, my grandniece and grandnephew. So I'm very, very excited. Really happy so, to be, be home. So, so we're actually going to be headed that way for the uh, Army Navy game. They're going to it's going to be played at the uh, was that is that MetLife or is it MetLife yeah. Stadium in a yes. in New Jersey? Yes, sir, MetLife. Oh my God, really? Army yes. Navy. That's so famous. Army Navy games. Really, I. It. Absolutely, absolutely. Like, but I, I'm, I'm sure like we got to bundle Point up. Is that right? West Point in Annapolis, or my? Yeah. Yes, 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 ma'am. You got That's it right. 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 Yes, ma'am. And I know the Air Force out in Colorado Springs too, because I used to, I was a skater and I used to train out there, so I know that too. I've actually skated. I was a figure oh, skater once. I skated at West Point yeah. in their. Um, they had an ice show. They used to have invite skaters to come, and I've skated at West Point, believe it or not. Can't Man. believe how, it. How, how is it fair that you're talented in so many different areas? You're a, skate, a, a, a skater, a fashion designer. I'm, I'm still trying to find my one thing that I'm good at. I don't really know. <laughs> I really <laughs> love, I love figure skating. I just, you know, the typical story. My dad bought me a pair of skates. He took me to a lake or a pond, happened to be in Central Park. I fell in love with it, and then I became a skater, and it was just, um, it just felt the closest thing I knew to flying, and I just fell in love with it. But um, I never really made the Olympic team, which was, you know, one of those things, speaking of Brazilians and trying, trying, trying. Um, I, after I quit skating, I went on to um, try to find another passion. And I sort of discovered that when I was going to school in Paris that I really love fashion. So luckily for me, I've had two loves in my life, fashion and figure skating. Awesome. And now tennis, watching. <laughs> Big tennis fan. Oh. Anyway. Excellent. Very good. My son plays tennis. Um, it's a terrific sport. It's a lifelong sport. So that's a really good it thing is. about it. Is you can play at any age and, you know, you Absolutely. can be 90 years old and still able to play, which is yeah, really I pretty fantastic. Saw the, uh, I saw the, the film from um, about the Williams sisters recently and their father, King Richard. It's really incredible. So um, it's Oh, just did you like it? We're looking at going to, you liked it? I loved it. I just thought it was a story of um, 
family and things you would never, ever know about what went on in that family. And, you know, obviously the sacrifice of both parents, but also the way those girls, all of them were brought up. It's just an incredibly um, positive, spirited, wonderful, wonderful story. Really great. I think Will Smith produced. It was really great. Yes, I know he was involved with it. That is on my family's list of things to watch this holiday season. Um, so Absolutely. it's <laughs> going really into cool. year two of uh, <laughs> we're going into year two of holidays during the pandemic. So how have you how have you been faring during the the COVID nineteen era? Well, you know, like for me, even in my own little bubble. Um, it really has changed me in so many ways and it's changed everyone's lives. I don't think anyone wasn't affected by it on this planet. And it was maybe a, a bit of a silver lining in a way because it made us or gave us the opportunity to slow down and to really rethink um, how we live and um, what can happen. And um, certainly speaking to this audience, the kind of resilience and the kind of courage and the kind of discipline it takes to um, you know, survive something like this. So um, there have been some, at least one silver lining as far as I can see, but for me in particular, it did help me reconsider a lot of things in my life. And I think that's, you know, when you're always on the go and always on the move, and that's very much what modern life is about, um, it really took few steps and I I think in in a long run it was very positive many parts of it the self-examination and that sort of thing that's an excellent way to you know to look at it and and find the silver lining like you said um so let's talk a little bit about um you and how you got started so you were a senior editor at Vogue and then a designer director at a design director at Ralph Lauren um before founding your bridal boutique so did you go yes. into your business ever imagining that your designs would become so iconic I I really didn't because sort of my like many things in my life how I got into this was um so strange I mean I was a 39 and three quarters year old bride. And um, my father was walk, running around with me looking at wedding gowns. Unfortunately, my mother wasn't in great health at the time. And he sort of recognized this incredible opportunity because I wasn't, you know, a 25 or 29 year old bride. I was almost 40. And there really wasn't anything on the market that I saw that I felt comfortable with. You know what I mean? And so um, he was instrumental in saying to me, there is a market here and it would be great um, if you started a company and started to create dresses that were perhaps more fashion oriented. And so that's how it all began. But, um, you know, where it's gone after 32 years has been even um, amazing to me, all the steps along the way all the women that have entrusted me with the most important day in their lives. And it's been a privilege, I have to say. Um, you know, when it comes to wedding, I'm more of a costumer than even a designer because I'm really trying to translate um, a woman's image of herself and who she wants to be on that day. And of course, I respect diversity and creativity and all those things that as a designer, one loves. But I think for wedding day, it's even more significant because there's so much attached to that dress. It's a lifetime of dreams. It's a lifetime of you know, like promises. It's a lifetime of opportunity. And it's one of the most optimistic steps one takes in their life is, you know, to marry someone. So that dress takes some very special significance. And um, I'm proud to say that many of our clients, I think, are all so different as women. And um, I'm really trying to get to their heads and create for them as well, not just the designs I create, but also for our VIP brides. Yeah, yeah, those wedding dresses are, are, are something serious because I think they even go to the extent of vac vacuum sealing. I think in my garage, I got a vacuum sealed wedding dress from 
you know, 16, 17 years ago. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. You're obviously still married. So I'm glad you're yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what happens when, when you're not, when you're not married again, but yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely a, a super special a day for, for a lot of folks. And, um, it's awesome that you're you're designing some, I mean, memorable dresses, just beautiful dresses. But it, you know, you just never forget that day. You never forget that moment. You never forget what you were wearing and all that stuff. So uh, that's that's an awesome that you're a part of. You know, so many people's lives in that way. Uh, and you and you mentioned earlier about being a big believer in resilience, and I can tell that you have like a a, a positive like vibe or energy about yourself. Uh, and, and I think you spoke on uh, celebrating daily victories, uh, even through hard times. Uh, talk to us about that mindset, uh, how positive thinking benefits all, and uh, especially during this uh, global pandemic and all the craziness that's going on in the world. Well, you know, as I said, when I started figure skating at like six, um, in order to learn to skate, you have to fall, I would say 90% of the time to learn every single move and every jump and choreography and spinning and well, it looks very effortless, I know, when it's perfected, but it's a very, very difficult sport. And all you do is fall. And I think the fact you learn to pick yourself up, um, no matter how bad a fall, and try again, is one of those lessons that um, I was imbued with from a very young age. And I skated for about 14 years. So by the time I quit competitive skating, I think it had developed something in me that not everything is going to be easy or a given and that um, it's going to be up to you and your mindset and also what's in your heart as well. And those things, when you put heart and your mind together, um, it can be very powerful, I think. And the goal, I, I hope, for most people, particularly young people today, is they find something that means something to them a great deal that they can commit to, as obviously your audience does. And I think that that's, um, that's probably one of the most valuable lessons I would like to impart. And also one of the things that I think makes um, life so so important and interesting and that you learn to grow. And I think that's been a part of my life. And Vera, this type of mindset also involves fostering a sense of community. So can you expand on community and why belonging to a community is so vital now more than ever? I think we've all learned from being isolated from each other for so long that um, we may have in a way forgotten um, or had to relearn how important community is and being able to come back together. Whether your community is very small or very large, there is such joy in human interaction. And I think that's one of the things that changed so much in my life is that I really began to see that people I hadn't seen in years or hadn't contacted, I just wanted to get in touch again because you realize how precious life really is. And I think that we all, we are one planet and we all have to support each other. And I think that's one of the messages that you really, you really learn by seeing what went on during this pandemic globally or what is still going on and everything else that's happened because of it. And so I think, um, you know, community can start with yourself because I think you have to first of all look within and then from there, you know, um, spreading it all out from there to your family, to your friends, to your colleagues, to your world, to your industry, whatever that may be. That's fantastic. And Vera, um, how have you managed to celebrate and innovate throughout the pandemic and during the pandemic? Well, you know, I, it's no secret that the fashion industry is very hard hit. Um, you know, most of our stores, I mean, the industry are globally were shut down for, you know, into a year, if not more, and then reopen under very limited circumstances. And I think, um, you know, we as a company were forced to think of new ways in which we could pivot in a way the the reputation i hope and the branding we've done for so long into new areas so i was very lucky to be able to work with disney on the series of Minnie mouse ears 
um, not only for brides to get married at Disney, but for women in general, or, or men, or whoever wants to wear them. But I'm very proud of them. There's a series that are coming out. One just launched. Um, another one is certainly um, my foray into alcohol. You know, um, mostly Prosecco is a drink now that's widely um, used for toasting and drinking at weddings. So there was a direct link there for me, and it felt very natural and very easy. And I think um, that's why frequently my early can ad campaigns have been about a party of one when people couldn't congregate together to now people beginning to be able to have weddings again and celebrating um, not only their love and their marriage but and their friends and their community, but their lives. So that was another one of those um, the wonderful results um, that we were able to get that entire project up and running. And it was, um, it's taken over two years, but very, very proud of it. Yeah. So, so what's it like learning a new business? Uh, kind oh, of, God, you, know, I know you, you are so right. I mean, I learned, um, I just, it's incredible. I mean, like everything that we undertake, whether it was eyewear, or whether it was, you know, China or whether it was glassware, crystals. I mean, I've had such a learning curve my whole career. And whether I worked at Vogue or whether I worked at Ralph Lauren, it's been a constant learning process for me. And I, I find that's fascinating. I mean, people ask me, what, where does your spirit come from and all this? But I think it's constantly being exposed to new worlds and having the opportunity to learn about it that makes it so interesting. And I think um, it also keeps you young. I think, I think it keeps your, your mindset young and curious. And I think that's one of the, the great things about being a designer is that you're able to really explore many different areas, not unlike actors and musicians or, you know, you just, you really just are able to involve yourself in other, in other worlds. And that's a, also a huge privilege, I think. Well, with Thanksgiving this week, the holiday season is officially upon us. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, what, so excited. So excited. <laughs> me too. Me yes. too. What tips do you, what tips together, do you have? You know? for, yes. <laughs> finally, yes. right? <laughs> what yes, tips do you finally. have for celebrating this season? <laughs> well, I think, you know, I don't have a huge nuclear family within my own family, but my brother and his wife do. So when we merge the families, we kind of um, become more numerous and now they're grandchildren around. So that just adds another generation. And it's really, um, I think it's really exciting. This is the first time we've been able to see each other all together as a family in over two years. So um, we really have a lot to be thankful for that we're all healthy and we're all here and that um, that these two wonderful babies that have joined our universe. So all of those things are, just so exciting. I really can't, I'm really looking forward to this Thanksgiving. Awesome. So Vera, we have the military community watching from around the world. Do you have a message that you'd like to share with the troops this Thanksgiving? Oh my God, of course, there's so many, but I think gratitude is one of the biggest. Um, you know, I don't know whether you know this, but about two years ago, I did 10 weddings. Um, for first responders and people who are in the military called Brides Across America. And I did it for my 30th anniversary of my company. And it was one of the best experiences I ever had to be able to offer a complete wedding from invitations and engagement rings and wedding bands and the dresses and everything else. Um, to these incredible people. I mean, I met them and some of them have become friends for life. And um, either they were in the military or both of them were in the military or one was. And um, it just was one of those moments where you kind of get a glimpse into all your work and everything you've done, but giving back in a way that is so meaningful to people. So, you know, um, I would say gratitude is the biggest when people devote their life um, to service and to our safety. And um, that that's the ultimate giving back. I mean, there isn't any bigger giving back than that. And I think that um, most of us, perhaps in a daily, in our daily lives, don't realize just 
you know, what level of giving back that is for not only them, but their families as well. So the sacrifices they have to make. So. That's spot on, Vera. Thank you for that. Um, thank you for those words and for your, the role that you play too in helping the first responders and helping uh, our military celebrate the life's big moments. I wanted to pause for just a moment and turn to our live Facebook feed where we do have people watching from all over the world. Terry Hill, she is a Sergeant First Class. She's watching from Germany and she says, hello. Um, hi. We have Lorena, hi. <laughs> we have Lorena is watching and she says, wow. And Dora says, wow, Vera Wang. So Dora is excited to see you on the show today. <laughs> Sandy That's says, so lots of Vera Wang in my closet. <laughs> That's great. So and we have, we do have one question um, from Emily and Emily is asking, what advice do you have for young designers? Well, before the pandemic and for a very long time when I spoke to students, um, I would always say, work for someone that you admire in fashion if you can in some capacity either a company or a brand or designer and you get paid to learn you're being trained and that's one of the best experiences you can have um i certainly went that route throughout my career and um i started as an intern at vogue so and worked my way up there for nearly 20 years but um i think that is one of the the best ways to get into fashion is to try and get a job in whatever area you can there um, with someone that you really admire or someone's work that you admire. And now since the pandemic, I've also seen, I've come to see things a little bit in another light as well. And I think one of them is that, you know, there are many routes and there may, if one thing we've all learned from all of this today with the internet and social media and all these other things that didn't exist that weren't available when I started. I have to say that um, if you find a way to somehow create your own statement and what you believe in, and um, even if you start very small, um, there's something very entrepreneurial and also very exciting about that. I'm not gonna say easy, certainly not, but there's, there are other alternatives now as well. I really do believe that. And I would not have said that even as recently as five or six years ago. But now I, I really do see that there's so much homegrown talent everywhere in the world. And I think um, their chance to explore it um, is something that I find is going to be very exciting for the next generation of designers. So That's I hope awesome. that answers it. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it does. It does. And, and I must say for me, uh, I, I got to ask a question. Uh, can you so you have this beautiful dog in the back in the background right now? That's that's so yes. well behaved. And, and I, I, I think I think we, on when. she's pretty well behaved. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I'm like, I'm trying to figure out how many interviews has this dog been on? Because it it is a professional professional. <laughs> she in every sense of the school. word she's a strange dog she just turned 12 and that's 84 in our age group so finally my dog's <laughs> older than me but i have to say um, she's a unique dog she comes to design meetings and watches and she's really engaged i've had a lot of dogs in my life and you know all my dogs have been family dogs pretty much with the girls and um she's just one of She's just one of these very strange characters. And when I move her, she's going to be angry at me. So she just comes and sits on the sofa with me. And that's, that's what she does. Yeah. Well I, <laughs> I, well, I can tell, like, even like the your background is like really like soothing. And you got this calm dog yes. that kind of comes back and forth. I'm like, man, it, I probably could create something in that in that atmosphere that you got set up for yourself. So uh. we're very observant because I do like a very zen environment because I think my life isn't that zen. So I try to create it at home, you know. And um, someone asked my daughters 
what it was like to be in this apartment because they're both grown up and you know live on their own but they said uh, that someone said it doesn't seem cold and they said no it's actually very relaxing so um that sort of was my aim and I guess my dog seems very relaxed, obviously. Lying here. Oh, oh, yeah, no. But I'm, afraid move her. I'm afraid if I move her around, she's going to be hurt and start crying. So I'm just. What's her name? Is, is her name Chill or, or just. Lola. What, it could be Chill. It's Lola. Lo okay. It's Lola. Lola. Prosecco. And she's, she's very comfortable with it. I don't know. If anyone tries to take it away from the soap, she'll probably get angry. But um, she's a very strange little character, but I love her a lot. We've been together Aww. a long time. <laughs> she's awesome. so cute. Thank you. Oh, she just changed sides, I think, now. Yeah. She did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, we, had, uh, we, we had another interview with uh, John Stewart, and he had a, a lot of animals, and his, and his oh. were not as well behaved. Yeah. As yours, I, 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 he had. <laughs> it felt like he had parakeets flying over the place and and that's geckos crazy. and all kind of other stuff going. On. Yeah, that's that's great. I mean, that's wonderful. I mean, I've never had a bird. I have to say, I've had a lot of dogs, but not birds. But parakeets yeah. flying around. Wow. Yeah, it, well, it seemed that like that it was a zoo over. It, was, it seemed like it was a zoo happening. over there, though. Yeah, if they're <laughs> flying around, there's stuff happening. That I must. That I'm sure of. Even though I've never owned a bird. But, um, awesome. One never so can, knows, right? So I know you got a lot of stuff going on right now. Uh, can you tell us, like, what else is on the horizon for you? you got anything else that you you might want to fill us in on? Um, you know, we are known for dressing um a lot of stars in Hollywood. So, you know, there's always um that kind of project in the works and um it's fairly constant given the amount of um award shows there are now um not only in the United States but all over the world in terms of the interest in film and television and I think just like music and concerts and I think um that's something hopefully we will be um doing for the next year in the season of award shows. And then I've always had this very secret desire to make a film, a full feature film, because sort of in fashion, you tell a story. In every one of my fashion shows or bridal shows or clients, there's a story. They're trying to tell a story. Either it's very romantic and it could be bucolic outdoors or it could be something that's at a beach and it's very cool and sexy or it could be in a church and they want to bring in um a certain belief system and a certain history to their to their family and friends i mean we've done so many different kinds of weddings um we've done weddings on ranches i mean it's kind of wild actually um it's great i mean it's just always a surprise but i have to say making a film would be um would be a you know something I would love to do, and I think um, weddings might be a good place to start. Maybe it's because I'm in the wedding business that I notice. Is there a wedding scene in every movie? Is there always a wedding scene somewhere? <laughs> yeah. Or is it just me? You know what I mean? Yes. Maybe it's because I, you know, I say, "Oh my God, this ends up as a wedding." Oh my God, we're going to get married. Or it's not just one runaway bride or my best friend's wedding. It's like all these films. Seem, it seems that I think it's because it's such a human experience, and that's why weddings appear so frequently in films. Gotcha. And I and I do have okay, one Matt. more question before we wrap it up. Uh, uh, so I know you got these high profile clients, and I'm trying to think of. In your world, uh, well, it probably I, I takes a little like, while. I mean, the ones yeah, yeah. I guess people think about are more, but yeah. I've got lots of great clients. Y yes, ma'am. But I'm, so I'm trying to think of of, of a high I profile mean, client, and they wedding. they send you, and they and they send you a text message and says, "I got this thing. I need something for in like how much how much lead time do you need? Do you do you like don't don't call me two weeks before the event and saying you need a dress, or can you make magic happen for certain folks? I have to say that for weddings, um, most of our VIP clients and most of my family 
circle of friends and their kids. Um, you know, I'm given a fair amount of time. Um, I think when we get so excited, um, first they get the ring, and then the next call is always to us. And um, that's very exciting, but at the same time, I think it takes a long time to plan a wedding. So for the most part, we're very lucky there. With Hollywood, it's a little bit different because they have to wait to be nominated and, um, you know, or select as presenters or whatever. And I think that that's, that's a bit more intense because you don't get that kind of lead time and you're not even sure, you know, necessarily, um, what the star is feeling. There has to be a tremendous amount of communication for how they want to be seen. So once again, in that instance, I always feel that though I am a fashion designer, I also am a storyteller or interpreter for the stars. I remember one particular incident with Charlize Theron and I dressed her for the Oscars and she'd just done a movie about golf, I think in the 30s called Bagger Vance. And she was determined to keep that 30s mood for the Oscars. So she wanted to look the way she did in the movie. So that same period. So that was very, very specific. And another time um, I dressed Holly Hunter when she won the Oscar for the piano. And she'd been in these incredible corsets and huge ball skirts um, shooting, I think in Australia. And she wanted to be in something in which she looked like herself and it was her, the real Holly, not the character she played. And she wanted something very sleek and very modern and very easy. And um, so that's just two little examples of women I've dressed and how different, you know, both clients can be, if that makes any sense. It really is custom. I mean, it really is yeah. like, I'm I become a costumer in a, in a way, in a manner of speaking. Yeah. Yep. And you help tell their stories. That's so great. Exactly. I think it's all about stories for all of us today. I mean, we all have stories. Um, I think life has become that. And, um, you know, we're so much maybe more aware of that now because as in mm -hmm. fashion, there's been so much diversity and creativity and, um, you know, storytelling on television and in film, not just film, but in, on TV. And I think that's opened up a big, wide, you know, endless resource of experience and emotion and all those things that, you know, imply creativity. And I think that's very, very exciting as well. And Vera, before we say goodbye, can you remind our viewers, where can they go with you in all of your latest business ventures? Um, VeraWang.com and VeraWangGang.com. Okay, okay, I like that, I like that. Yeah, I yeah. like it. Very complicated. VeraWang.com, VeraWangGang.com. VeraWang's my own. Vera Wang Gang is my corporate, but sometimes they're the same and sometimes they're not. It just depends what's going on in my life. You know what I mean? Just whatever. Gotcha. Well, we'll so check it out to hear all the things. Thank you guys for having me because um, I'm really such a big fan and um, you know, I'm just in awe of all of you. I have to be honest. Um, I'm really in awe. You know, um, I had a very different life's journey, and mine was always about creativity versus a figure skater, physically, choreography and music and movement. And, and then as a fashion designer, as an editor, excuse me, editor at Vogue, where I was photographing everyone else's clothing and creating these pictures that were in the magazine every month. But then um, ultimately for Ralph Lauren, and then ultimately on my own, um, my life has always been about the visual and storytelling. And um, to see people really sacrificing so much for the safety and, and really the care of others, um, I think it's really cool. It's really amazing. And um, I'm so proud to have been asked. So thank you guys. Yes.
No, oh. absolutely our pleasure. And uh, you heard it here first. Not only is Vera Wang a, a, a fan of the military, she's a fan of Chief Chat. So listen, we, yes. we're, we're, take, yes. we're taking the show on the road, y'all. Yes, definitely. <laughs> awesome, And awesome. we gotta get you fixed up with, I mean, I love, we all, fashion loves camouflage. That's the irony of it all. Oh we yeah, love, yeah. All of us, <laughs> most designers love camouflage. But I have to say, it's ironic that during camouflage and designers go out of their way to create camouflage. But um, we have to fix you up with a tuxedo or a suit or something. Oh, yeah, yeah. let's, let's, let's do, do it. Uh-oh. Right? Right? Uh -oh. right? Looks like right? I, I got to start working out again. Hold on. Let me let me, let me get my workout. It's, it's the wrong time of the year for, for any custom designs. <laughs> got too much food going on. Anyway. But you start wearing custom Vera on the show. Oh my gosh, man. Number oh, yeah. one, I think our ratings would explode. And then number two, I mean, you'd probably custom get called by Hollywood and you'd end up leaving yes. us. Well, yes, exactly. I mean, you know, it's yes. Yes. love it. It's, a, yeah, it's really I, almost a category for us now. Like jeans, you know, jeans are a category or, you know, t-shirts are a category, but camouflage is also a category for a lot of designers globally. <laughs> Yeah. Listen, awesome. if, if I if, if I get a Vera Wang uh, uh, fit, uh, I'm going to Jeopardy next. I'm I'm leaving Chief Chat and going to Jeopardy. I'm going to be the host of Jeopardy. <laughs> nah, I'm, I'm, Jeopardy does not want me at all. Trust well, me. I have to. I have to. I have to so, so you're fitting. So that's one thing that you know whether you want to be fitted or not is another thing. But um, no, it's just um, it's been really fun and really great, guys. Thank you. No, no, it's been it's been so much fun having you with us today, Vera. And uh, I can tell you, the more I do this show and the, the more I get a chance to talk to people, the more I see people giving back to the world. So um, like we appreciate you uh, from the military community. You, you, you know, you're doing weddings and, and, and things for first responders and military. I just learned so much about uh, our folks out there in the world that are, that are doing great things for, for people out in the world. And so uh, I want to say thank you for what you do. Uh, and, and uh, you know, you're very much appreciated. You're much a part of this ecosystem to make the world a better place along with the military and everybody else. So uh, thank you so much for what you do. Um, and we, we had a blast having you on the show today. Um, thank you guys. Thanks everybody. Awesome. And, and before we leave, for everybody watching, if you want to catch this episode, you can catch it on YouTube and Spotify as well. So um, with that being said, the exchange wishes you and yours a wonderful Thanksgiving, happy holidays, and Chief Chat out. Okay.